start, I guess. All right, so this is a feature that I wanted for a long time. And it's because I had a hard time with growing pains, um, the opposite of growing pains, losing balance pains, and trading proper size, and understanding what my losses will be, and understanding what my average entry will be, and understanding what's a good entry, and what's a good place for a stop, and how much I'm willing to risk, and all those good calculations. So I would be doing something like this all the time and say, okay, well, down 1.7%, what's my position size times 1.7%, or like if I go up a percent, how much is that worth? So I was tired of doing that. So that's where this tool comes in. So there's two ways you could use it. Um, I'm going to just start with the simpler one. And I promise this might look somewhat complicated. Can I you promise, zoom in? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll zoom in. Just, uh, um, zoom in so much, though. There you go. Okay. Oh, nice. Market stumping. Nice. I got stopped, too, for the order that was supposed to be an example. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Market smash short. <laughs> well, there's two ways uh, you could use this tool. I think it's really, really neat. I guess that did cancel. Um, one is let's just open a position just so we have an example. What do you think, long or short? Uh, short. Short yeah, at the bottom. Short too. Uh, we're just going to market short. Okay. Yeah. So this kind of stems. The stem. I don't really care about fees. Uh, this stem from the, um, partially from the crypto cred series because like when I started trading, I learned basically exclusively from Sam and crypto cred. So crypto cred talked about something called dynamic and static risk, and this moves panel is for you traders who like to do trade one percent moves, two percent moves things like that. And we're going to make it this super simple to make this so you could set it up with whatever percents you want. But in the risk profile, always in the middle uh, is going to be either the dynamic point and dynamic means um, your P&L and everything is based on last traded price, not your entry, but it's actually based on last traded price. So why would you do that? Well, once you kind of take an entry, it doesn't really matter anymore. What matters is what the price is right now and what your loss is right now and what your balance is right now. So you should be every time you're in a long and you've got like a great entry or a bad entry or whatever, um, you need to be considering if you still want to be long at this price. Like, would you long this? Maybe. Then stay in it. But if you really don't want to long this price, it's starting to look bad. You should not stay in that long because you're not in a long that entered at here. We'll say a short that entered at 37,189. You're in a short that's currently at 37,210. So, which is underwater right now. This is what puts into perspective if you trade percent moves. So there's two, the moves is based on static or dynamic. So dynamic is based on last price, it's in the middle. So your position is either below the last price or above the last price right now. So what it tells you is this is what happens when price goes up and this is what happens when price goes down. Pretty simple, the diamond's the middle, the up arrows is what happens when price goes up, Red arrows is what happens when price goes down. It shows you where your position is in the spread of percents. So what happens? I have a short right now. And if I go back to, if I basically, so my short is now above right now. So I'm in point, I'm in 18 cents p &L, And now my short's below last price or above technically, or wait, I get so confused, which is profit when I'm not looking at the chart. Or my short is not in profit or it is in profit. So, so far it's 0.05% and to get to 1%, that's 37,541. So if you're a percent trader, you say 37,541, that's about here. So you can put your profit takes or 
you could do whatever. Um, but use as you will. But you could say, if I let this go against me 5%, I will lose 19% of my balance, which really puts things in perspective. If I let this go back on me 1%, 1% price move on this trade, under margin, the debug part is kind of like if somebody has an issue, I'm going to have to ask you to screenshot that and send it to me. So don't really look at the debug part. But um, you're going to see if my price goes against me 1%, I'm going to lose 3.9% of my margin, like my balance. If I do that 10 times, that's going to fuck my account. So it's like it's like puts the risk in front of you to help you try to make a better decision about what you want to do with your position and whether you're oversized or undersized. So like we could just add to this short just to kind of see some updates here. So now if it goes against me 1% on this position, which is a 11.69% position, 11.69x position, I'm going to lose 11% of my balance. And if I let it go for me, 1% move, just a 1% move on an 11x position, that's an 11% gain on your balance. You with me so far? Oh, yeah. So you can either look at your position trade based on last price, which is what you literally have right now. You don't have the money you lost at your entry. You don't have it yet because you have to take it in real time. And that is based on last price. So, but And this is also based on your, uh, your FTX strategy, right? Where the second you yes. have margin oh. from your unrealized P&L, you add to the position. Yeah, so it's got, so you'll see in the other screen too, it's got um, your margin which is basically for FTX, it's unrealized P&L plus your balance to get margin. Um, but it also has realized in the other screen, but I'll get to that in a moment. And you can also do Russian doll strategy with this. And it's really cool. This thing, the next screen is what I love. I think it's honestly, I've talked to Sam and I, we've been kind of busy doing shit like bugs and getting the exchange everything like working properly in the exchange is integrated and i've wanted this feature and i basically stopped trading because i've been having such a hard time with my size and managing positions because trading is a very active thing where you have to keep a lot of stuff in the forefront of your brain um mm -hmm. so i said i'm not trading until i make this tool because <laughs> i've wanted this and i really think it's going to help me and i'm going to i mean you're welcome to use it too it's a feature of teal street obviously but i pretty yep. much made this for me uh because I was tired of measuring my positions and risk and not understanding my my loss. So uh, so if you do like to look at your position based on your entry, you can also uh, put it on the static mode, which puts the pivot point in the middle um, at your entry. So you can see last price is 0.34% above your entry. If it goes against you 1%, you're gonna lose 11.73 of your balance or you're gonna lose $11. So that's one way. Now this next tool, go ahead, Lat. I was just going to say this, this tool looks really great. If, if I'm not a Teal Street user, where do I go to, where do I go to try it out? Well, you can go into your, take your, your cute little fingers and go to Chrome and type in tealstreet.io. And that is where you can get this tool absolutely for free. For free? Free, zero, charging nothing. Actually, when you guys see this, I'm, I'm, I'm elated if you can't tell about this feature because I seriously think like the institutional traders must have something like this using internally. I have no reason to believe they wouldn't be thinking this way. So I'm actually elated that like we could put this in people's hands and like I get to use it. I'm like super excited. So we're gonna we're gonna have some fun here, okay? Um, so this toggle is a little goofy. It should not be here right now um, for this screen because it's I don't have it set up for static, but it's going to uh, it's just going to be hidden. So it doesn't really do anything here. It just actually does absolutely nothing. But that's why this is a beta feature because we're going to continually like we've talked with Sam and Lat and we've all talked together internally at Teal Street and we decided that we do want to how, like have the majority of the, the terminal working properly and bug free, mm. but still be aggressive with features and beta features. So this is kind of the beginning to Teal Street has a stable core 
And we're adding things like Twitter feeds where you can get your bias and you get squawks and you get bots. And you're adding things like risk profile, which are not standard things that are that prevent you from trading. They just help you trade better. So, okay, you guys are going to flip out. Are you ready? Are you ready, Lat? Ready. Okay, I'm going to close this position. All right. This is where it gets good. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, let's say we're just going to start simple. I am placing an order on the chart like you would any other day, right? And let's say I want to place a buy because I think this support is going to hold. Okay, that's cool. So here's the last price in the middle like we talked about. And here it shows that I would be opening a new long at 36,626, which is 1.86% down. So it knows that this order right here will be creating mm -hmm. a long. So here's where it gets interesting. Let's put a uh, close only stop down here, okay? Are you ready for this? This is, oh wait, I can do close on trigger. All right, close on trigger stop. It knows whether it's close on trigger or not. And mark price, very nice. So, wait, are you an FTX? Yeah, yeah, Jesus. you are. Okay, yeah, they, mark only choice. Yeah, they want to do everything for you. They're like, you should be using mark. It's like the FTX motto is, we made this this way, and you have to use it. <laughs> um, so look, okay, I have a stop. I have this order. Interesting. So what happens? Like, remember, this is the pivot point of price in the middle. Last price in the middle. We go down to 36,626 my order, and we fill a 0 .005 position at 2x. Well, what happens at that stop? I would lose $2.29. This tells you your loss at your stop for a position that doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. What percent of your margin you would lose at stop? What percent of your balance you would realize at stop? But wait! You think this is dumb. You think it only handles one entry. I need to see the people in the chat who really think this is the bare, this is the max of what it offers. Where are the doubters of Teal Street right now? Okay. I want to know. I'm a scaler. I think Lat's a scaler. We're all kind mm -hmm. of like to scale into positions. I want to know what my average entry is when we are scaling into a position. So I'm going to put a few more bids down here. Okay, so there, people want to know if this includes trading fees. Oh, it does. Okay, so that's the one thing. I need to actually put a little that's informative tricky. section. Trading fees are actually very complicated because they are yep. uh, not per the exchange. They are per user. Um, so we right. don't have a system in place right now to... Uh, we are planning this, but like I just said, this is we're now in feature yeah, mode tricky. instead of bug mode. So now we're gonna start working on things like this. But um, they are per user, so like it's not like I can we could put a raw percent in for Binance to calculate your fees. We have to like fetch your fees and correctly figure out that's what you're paying right now. So right now this might is be just able to do estimated. a minimum, right? Yeah, we could do a minimum, but I might as well just do it right because it's actually part of some of the other features we're working yeah. on right now. Um, but so, yeah, I'm going to put a note that this does not include fees. This is all estimates. That's what the little squiggle, squiggle means. All estimated. Okay. So let's just walk down from the last mm, price to this long to this stop and see what happens. So this is like a story of what your position may happen if the price goes down. What would happen to your uh, trades? So we enter along. And now we have a 0 0.005 entry, which you can convert this whole thing. We'll just do dollars because it's easier. You have 187 position size at 2x leverage. That's your first fill. So now at your second fill, your order is at 36,626. You're adding to the long. You're making it larger. And now you have a new average entry because you have two fills now. So it's not calculating just what this price is that your second fill. It's calculating the average of all of your fills in this direction. So you keep going as you're scaling in. You've got these scaled orders right here. 
and you want to know, by the time I get down to the bottom, what the hell is my average entry? So right here at the last order, the last event that happens when price is going down, it says your average entry will be 36,566. So right about here, near the middle-ish, obviously, is where your average entry shows up. So like when you're scaling orders, you don't have to like think about or figure out like what mm -hmm. the fuck is my average entry. And then you get filled and it's like fucking way higher than you thought. So... Uh, you can adjust them, too, on the fly. Obviously, this is all optimizable to just move these orders around and see what the loss is. So let's walk down again from the middle. And it's good that, yeah, you don't do math and you don't, like, forget math. Because, like, sometimes I'll be, like, six hours into a position and I'll forgot that I was originally comfortable with a huge loss because I was, like, very convinced about this trade. And then by the time, like, the trade realizes at a stop, and I lose money, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, that was a huge loss. I forgot. It was way too big for what happened as the trade developed. Like, I'm no longer confident. So I want to see, like, the story of the trade at all times. So our, so it's beyond just mm -hmm. seeing your average entry. You can see the leverage as it, the trade develops going downward, filling your positions, filling your orders. Um, you see what your unrealized P&L will be at each point. So this is what your P&L would be by the time it hits the second order, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And then obviously you're not realizing P&L because this is a uh, this is a active trade. You didn't realize anything. So your total P&L, just because it's dynamic, I mean, this is your loss right now, is $3.21 by the time you get to the last fill. And you can see same things as far as percent of margin and percent of balance. So we can go further where you could say, uh, now I'm filled and I am going down and I'm $936 long. And here is my entry at 36,556. And uh, what's going to happen when the stop hits now? So by the time we get to the stop at the bottom, I will lose, realize down in the middle column, I will realize $9.71% or $9.71 loss. You can see it's under the realized column, which will take 10% yep. off of my balance. Are you comfortable with that lap? Hell no. No. <laughs> and I would do this shit all the time. I'd be like, yeah, this is fine. A 10 X. And then I'm like, oh fuck, I'm losing money like crazy. So this shows you exactly what the hell you're getting into without like, it's just, I don't know. I'm astounded. But here, wait, there's more. You think, God, these guys at Teal Street, man, they're mm. kind of like dummies, aren't they? I think that's mm. what some people said. Mm. But what if you wanted to uh, scale? Uh, what if you wanted a long and then have nested stops, like a Russian doll type entry? Oh, yeah. So you could do something along the lines of, this goes... I mean, this is like, one as to quote Sam, this is turtles all the way down. You can know what happens if you start scaling into a trade after your stop. And what would total happen to your balance? Total. All the way. I can have 75, 100, 200 infinite longs and stops. And it will tell me when it gets to the bottom how much money I lost. Exactly. God. So let's just get fancy here. And this is just let's for this fancy. long that hasn't happened yet. We're excited about a position that's not even open. What if, like, imagine when we get to actually having an open position. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, let's make this something like a nested stop. This is a strategy I use um, occasionally where I... I um, I will try to fill very aggressively. And if it doesn't bounce like right at the support, I will take some off. So basically, let's just say I have, put this in dollars here. My position will be $937 by the time I get to the stop. Are you ready? But I'm going to just take off some. So I will realize at this first stop, 
a $2.40 loss while still maintaining a $500 position long. And I can also keep scaling further or have a real stop down at the bottom. So let's just put these guys up here. Like sometimes I'll put them really aggressively towards this first stop, but I'll cut it right away, but keep some on. So I could have a secondary nested stop here. Uh, we'll just, what's my order? Uh, sorry, 0 0.035. So there'd be 0 0.025 left. So I will lose. You could even see it just walks you right through right through this um, story of your trade as price direction develops downward. Uh, your first stop, you'll lose $1.85 realized. You'll have $4.63 uh, loss unrealized. And once it develops all the way down to that last stop, you will close. It says it right here. And you will close $8.90 and be overall down $10.76, which is a 10.10. .10, actually, this is a... Uh, 11.95% total loss down to this point. So this is uh, sum, much. cumulative, cumulative sum. And this is uh, the change for this event. So this first stop, I realize a 2% loss. And then the second stop, I realize a 10% loss. And then some math happens and total it's uh, about a 12% loss. And you can move these and scale them in any which way you like. This goes all the way down. The thing is it doesn't like, it only goes in one direction. So this is what happens down or this is what happens up, but it doesn't really say what happens if it goes down then up. That's just something you'll have to figure out once you get filled. Um, it's kind of not really logical to try to do that or expect your position to play out perfectly, but at least you know Question. the first step of your trade idea, how it would develop, yes. Uh, what if in the process of using this tool, I realize that I'm a terrible trader and bad <laughs> at math? Well, there's a feature that we're coming out with, and you must have been like really drunk or something because we talked about this, where you will yell at them through the terminal mm -hmm. and say, that's a fucking horrible idea. Could you just say it? Because remember, we were doing this and recording this. This is coming up. You, what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> say? That's a fucking horrible idea. That's a fucking horrible idea. See, Cancel but... all orders. And then LAT will cancel them through the LAT AI for you. There you go. So that's what happened is if price is going down. And this, this, I mean, it's pretty good. You could basically do things like I'm going to not put a, you can get complicated, play with this. I Please play with it because you will, it mm -hmm. will make more sense as you play with it. But you, it's smart. Watch this. Point one stop loss. No close on trigger. No close on trigger. A point one stop loss, which is much larger than my position. I'm going to just pop that bad boy in there. What the fuck? I am have a stop loss and I'm flipping short. Now I'm suddenly taking short profits. <gasps> I didn't want that, or maybe I did want no, that. No, you did. I also wanted to see it, but you could just keep keep going with this. It's really. I mean, I I am so hyped <laughs> about it me too me too all right so let's clear the board and we'll put a position in and this obviously you can mentally conceptualize up in in the same way up works the same as down but let's put a position on mm -hmm. uh, oh i'm yeah okay that was kind of bouncy. What time is it? It's not open. Um, like, why am I considering what trade I should take for this demo? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, it's the risk I mean, profile forcing me to consider. Every time I'm actions. testing, I'm, I'm always actually, you know, like trying to take a legitimate trade. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like in in us as traders. Like, Can't like, help well, it. I don't want to lose. I want to win this one. All right, I'm yeah. just gonna long. For testing purposes, if it's losing, it was for testing purposes. If it's uh, oops, if it's not losing, it was not for testing purposes. What's going on? Hold on one sec. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so I have a long. 
now. So I longed and I am currently uh, in profit based on the last price. So here's my entry and at last, here's my unrealized PL. Yeah, Blackbird, I think that's a. Uh, I think Sam's actually working on that right now. There's, I think it's the trading view charts like freezing every once in a while. Um, so, so far we're unrealized, $1.98, I am 10x. So let's just look at this right now. Remember, this is the fun, a fun way to think about your position is, this is my money right now. You think that <laughs> your money belongs to you at your entry, but this money at last price sitting there right in front of you, 23 cents, probably not 23 cents for long, there we go, is your money right now. So that's why the middle pivot point is always based on last price. And you can see I am down almost 1% of my margin on my trade because it would take 1% move up for me to get back to the last price. So let's just add a couple, uh, we'll add a stop and we'll add a take profit like this is a normal order. So uh, close on trigger stop. I'm going to put it below this low. And I'm going to uh, do some take profits in the scaled fashion that uh, I like to do. A lot of you like to do, obviously. Um, Cause I feel like we're all students of Sam and this is like, mm. like he does it, did it so often. That's why I did it. All right. So I'm going to take some profits here. What did I just do? Oh, I did. Oh, I made it, oh, wrong size. Made it here, made it here. And there's gonna be some global analysis tools, not like this individual kind of stuff, not individual trades, but like global, what's your R, what's your loss at a glance. Um, but we can look at this and say, so I'm in a long, is everybody following? I'm kind of speed, speed running. Does anybody have any questions so far? Any questions? Pause. Pause for a moment. Take a breath. Not anymore. Does this answer all your questions? Don't the debug is just there for me. Because this is a beta. Um this is a beta. Don't trust this. Um it's prone to what? possibly have mistakes in it. And yeah. that's the um benefit to kind of i get we get feedback really fast and you get to use something right away so it's kind of a that's the relationship we're having right now as a trading software company and a user so this is at your own risk um so i have beta there or debug there so if you come to me and you say i have an issue i'm going to ask you to screenshot this screen so mm -hmm. i can look and see what's going on with the math so that's the debug Uh, the short's showing XX. Could you take a screenshot, um, of your moves tab curling? Yeah, ton. Why is it now? Because we haven't told anyone about it. <laughs> like, we've yeah. been, we've been, like, working diligently in the background, waiting to, like, burst onto the scene. And this is, like, it. We, we're out of beta. You guys can tell everyone you want about how great Teal Street is, and we're ready for it. We're ready for scaling. We're ready for users. We're ready to keep adding features. So, feature rich. We don't make ourselves number one. It's your opinions that make us number one. You know, so you got to mm. go out there and tell people that we're number one until you tell enough people that they all agree, and then we are number one, and we have Ooh. enough resources to make all these great features. Mm-hmm. There will be like a Teal Street coin eventually, but it's going to have yeah. some actual uh, some possible well we don't we want to have some actual utility if we do it. We're not gonna just make a coin to pump and dump you. Like we wanna have a use for it. 
Uh, yeah. We could play a little marbles if Lat wants to play a little marbles after. Sure. Somebody, somebody said something. Let me look at this curling screenshot. Yeah, so um, what the hell is happening here? Oh, you're short. Okay, so yeah, this is where this is the dynamic way to look at it. So last price is in the middle. It would take uh three point nine two percent for price to go up and back to your entry. So this puts in perspective um what you would basically lost by lose by your position going back up. And it's only red. The word is only red. Maybe it's a little confusing. Oh, the margin percentage. Oh, okay, okay. Um, this is a little, I'll have to mess with this. Let me think for one second. Because you should have losses all, oh. Yeah, you should be basically. I feel like I need to see the chart. <laughs> Yeah. Like, Could you screenshot your chart? <laughs> I think there's an issue with showing the margin, but I can't remember. It's a good short. Also. Because this is correct. If last price goes back to your entry, your margin will go down 64%. So 64% of your worth on this account is based on this short being in profit right now what uh what exchange is this from curling uh should be agnostic of exchange but it's a good question um curling do you mind taking a screenshot of like your whole screen so i can see the whole story here and i'll look at this after and probably push something later today I think it's uh Okay. Yes, this is a good short. You just said this to show off your short. I get it. I will, <laughs> I will look at this after that. That is a nice short. Oh, it's on Bybit too. Okay, cool. I appreciate you posting this. Um Sue. So, what else? I feel like I missed anything. We got some new Teal Street users. iTank has been using it for two days. It's very nice, like new risk profile. You can see there's two, there's a lot of edge cases to this. Um, so it's got some room for errors, so pay attention. Uh, hmm. I put way more time into the spread than the moves because I thought I was smart enough to do this. And I thought this was simple enough, but apparently not. Um, so I'll just double check. Yeah, how many hours do you think it took you in total to make this? Okay, so the back end math concept. Uh, the concept I kind of just um, it was based on the other thing from way when we were starting last May when we were talking about the position mm -hmm. manager. Mm -hmm. So this is like a micro version of that. And then it took me probably like three weeks to just do the back end of it. Um, the like, like, I mean, like pretty much straight. Because this is all basically like FIFO, first in, first out. So what's going on as far as things going in this direction, um, which is in first order in means the first one out, like FIFO. Boop, 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 boop. So that back end part I rewrote three times because it was so many edge cases with these things of like, am I closing? Am I opening? Am I reduce only? Am I not reduce only? Like, is this a new position? Is this a flip? Is this a close? Is this a partial TP? Is this a full TP? So there's so many of those edge cases that the code was a mess. So the first time I wrote it, I was like, this is a nightmare. I can't read this. I'm going to rewrite it. And then I went mm. the second time and I wrote it again. I was like, oh, yeah, this still kind of works, but this is a nightmare and I can't read it because this is still hard to like conceptualize this like mathematically. So by the third time I rewrote it, I made it readable. 
code, which is makes it maintainable and easy to fix things. Um, so it took me three tries to do the back end, and then the front part, uh, Sam helped with, and then it really only took me like two days to do the front display of the data. The back end, the, getting the math right was the hardest part, obviously. Okay. Um. Let us see. So this is my current long. And we are going to analyze our risk with the risk manager. And I'm scrolling up so you can see it on the chart. Okay, so right here is last price. And I'm currently underwater because my long entry is above last price. And there's 85 cents unrealized. But I want to know what basically my R is. And we're going to do a... A, a, like a way to kind of do this automatically just not we just didn't because i wanted to get this out for feedback um and we wanted mm -hmm. we wanted to hear what people thought about it before wanting to make changes um so what would happen so it would go to my stop and i would lose 13 dollars and 30 cents or it would go to my take profit all the way at the end and i would gain 16 dollars and 42 cents so that kind of sucks right Cause that's like a barely a one R trade. I'm risking a little more than one to get one back. Or I'm risking a little less than one. Wait, what's the word? I'm wanting to get a little more than one to risk one. So it's like barely like, well, you can kind of see I'm risking 14% of my balance to get 18% profit. That's not like great. So you could like sit here and obviously here's the thing. Like I've gotten myself into a trap with this and you got to remember to trade based on the chart. Even though you yep. get the numbers looking pretty trade based off the chart. So I'm going to like look at this yep. and I'm going to say, let's adjust this to see if we get a better R. And maybe there's not a good trade here. I closed a lot of trades based on this. So let's say um, I move my stop below this low. Uh, this wick low right here. I know this is not a great trade, but this is just an example. So I moved it, and now my loss is $6.60, and my profit is $16. So that is about a 3R trade. That's like a little better. But you can also adjust your take profits, obviously, to get a better R. So you can move, uh, like, one is your uh, moon shot, you know? So I moved that one up, and I gained about... 40 cents, 50, 60 cents. I could move another one up. I could take some early, see what that does. I should probably move my notifications. And you could basically adjust what you'll get out of it and what your uh, loss will be. And you could also like to like Martingale. Oh yeah. Any, any Martingale fans out any, there? Any Martingalers in here? Where's my Martingale? Couldn't be me. Uh, you could also Martingale to average your entry down. And it still updates your loss as you're filling in your martingale. Uh, so look at that. I mean, I'm martingaling. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't know that this will fill. Remember, like it, it only shows the profit for the point zero zero. Um, it only shows the profit for the point oh two five because it doesn't, remember, it doesn't calculate down and up. It doesn't calculate up and down. It only goes down and it only goes up. Um, so this is what happens with the current position up, and this is what happens down, which I would be martingaling into a larger position and taking a little bit more of a loss. So obviously, like once you fill, you could put some more take profits up at the top and fill it. Or you can short. So like here's a fun thing too. I want to, let's have, okay, so here's, let's transition. I am just a god trader, and I just hit these. This is a theory. This isn't the fact. It's, it's just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah. I, I got think, it. I I'm, understand. I follow. I think I'm going to fucking nail this. I'm going to be long, take profit, and then I'm going to short this top. So this is sick. Uh, I love this uh, feature because it kind of like helps you combine two trades, trade ideas into one. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to fucking take profit and nail this stop. What happens? 
I'm at last price and I am long in profit right now. So as my trade develops upward, up arrows, blue, up, I'm going to be taking profits and then closing my position. So once that's all said and done, my realized P&L is all calculated, my balance is up 18%. I'm doing sitting pretty, and I think, man, I am just going to trade the fuck out of this range. So I'm going to have a short fill near the top. So I'm going to short four, four entries, four size, uh, four of my size. I kind of trade based on a normal, regular order sizes, so I could just click. And then I'm going to have a stop. So what happens? I am basically going to realize $16, and then math, 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 I'm going to lose five dollars. So by the time I, I if I were to take all my profits, and I were to get short, and I would get stopped, I would still be up eleven dollars and twenty seven cents. So it's kind of it's a it just the sum here. This is sum symbol for the record total. The sum symbol goes all the way up and calculates based on multiple positions. So I could still like be like I'm going to keep shorting. I could flip long. It's like, it just never ends. Have another short. It just keeps going and adding up what's happening as your position develops in this direction with everything you have on the chart right now. Boom. Boom. Any questions? Uh, do you see the question from FUBAR TV? FUBAR. Oh, stop loss point one. It's a reduce only order. Um, this one. See, it's reduce only, and then you can see uh, it, the word close is like you want. This is one of those things too. You're gonna start using it, and it'll make sense. Uh, but this is the first time you're seeing it. But in action, it makes more sense. So this is a sh uh, reduce only. So if it fills, it won't. It won't add to the position. It won't create a long. It'll close the position completely, and that's why the position is zero. Um, a little disclosure, at least as far as I know, for Bybit Linear, for whatever reason, uh, Bybit Linear um, does not serve the information of whether your order is closed on trigger or reduce only. So uh, if you're using this for Bybit Linear, just note that it will say, just always make sure you reduce only when you put the order in, if you want it to be reduce only, because this won't this will always the, the here's good and bad it'll never say it's reduce only which is like good because most of the time you don't want your stop to be reduce only and you would want to know that and the bad is it doesn't show that it's reduce only when it actually is <laughs> um so you just have to make sure and we have to it's just one of those things we have to go back and fix too because it's not mm -hmm. it's just like some of these exchanges for some reason they had a bright idea that they didn't think users would need this or people making terminals would need reduce only and lo and behold some reason traders want to know it so mm -hmm. lo and behold yeah miz have you have you seen the did you watch the whole stream Miz, or did you just get here i swear i just saw you now so play around with it um and it just shows the current market, right? Yeah, only the current market for now. I I think there's a way because here's the great thing, and I it's a reason I wrote the back end of this like three times, is because I wanted this to be the 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 line item processing system to be able to do much more powerful things. So like this is you could obviously see it right here. This is all of the math and information to do something like Coin Market Man, and show you all of your historical trades and profits in a better way too. It's not. Uh, this is not Sam's only project. It's come like a. Sam is CEO, and there's a lot of people working for Teal Street right now. And it's growing, growing. I don't know how much details I can give, but uh, we're trying to be legitimate. We're going to always be free. Uh, we're going to keep pushing features out like this. Want to keep doing streams, you know? So.
yeah, just try it. Try like try to set do a setup and play around and adjust things and see if it uh see if it changes your mind about your setup or maybe you might lose more than you thought. Yeah, Agar wouldn't be that hard to put on Teal Street. Um it's actually I think we have a ticket as a feature. I think it would take Sam like a day or two, probably like a day. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's in the queue for things, uh, for new features. Yeah, dude, Teal Street has developed into something so much farther than what it was. It's absolutely insane. Like, now we're, we're we have fleshed out that we are a uh, terminal that's reliable and usable with the basic features plus some more and now we're able to go beyond the shit that's in a normal terminal like the twitter feed and risk management yeah we'd love to yep. just i mean and the porn hub the, uh, integration that's a that's a uh, that's a Teal premium feature, sorry. only right now <laughs> we're gonna release that soon <laughs> it only has lost porn though <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Sam here. Well, I know Sam's not here, but I mean in Slack. I wanted to see if he wanted to talk about some of the coming shit. Yeah, he said something. He said I. All right, Fubar had another question. Like the sum delta balance that actually gives out the percentage, which is higher than you really think, and add commission to that. And by commission, you mean trading fees, like maker versus taker? Is that what you mean? Yeah, trading fees. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've wanted that feature right basically for a long time. Um, like an estimate of the fees, like quote, quoted based in, you know, in dollars or in Bitcoin. So yeah. that'd be great. Um, yeah, it's totally doable. I mean, the exchanges offer, the exchanges use the same backend uh act like system, the same endpoints as they offer out to us as uh, developers um so anything that the exchange offers in theory we should be able to access as well for you so it's just a matter of like i said fees believe it or not would take longer to do than creating this in entirety to get fees properly working put that into perspective yep. so it just like it's eventually we have to, we are going to do it's just a matter of time and i will note somewhere like uh, like maybe at the bottom, all the information nuances, it should be pointed out. But I think it's more information than you had before, too. <laughs> the record. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is one of those things that I'm guessing a lot of people might not understand the first time they see it, but if they just you know, play with it, spend some time, don't give up. Yeah. Eventually is, they'll just kind of figure it out. Yes. This is don't rest on this. It's might be confusing. Put your normal trades through and look at it. And it's super powerful. Like I said, I'm, I'm almost certain that all like major firms are using some sort of proprietary software that's similar to this. And they're the ones beating you in the market. So you might as well like use your own ammunition against you. I mean, this isn't telling you like what's a what's a good entry, what's a good, you know, long or short, but it does tell you that I am am I really willing to risk this on this mediocre trade? Like, you know, am I leaving too much on the table? These are all things they the exchanges and firms and uh, institutions want like they don't want you to survive. And this is like a tool like to help you survive and grow your balance and be trading larger size if you use it yeah just look properly. at uh, just look at binance and it's so obvious that they don't want you to win or be a profitable trader yeah it's like i don't like sam was saying this earlier like we don't 
Like, do you know anyone who trades through the Binance terminal? Like, they use Quantower or something else. Mm-hmm. Ms. Love's playing with it. Yeah, Ms., you seem like the, uh, the right audience for this. I knew you would like this. Yeah, Peter, I mean, it's, you would, I would think that too, but, you know, if you, like, just spend a little bit of time on the main side of Binance, you can tell that they're spending all of their time and resources and energy, like, adding things like, you know, staking on Binance and DeFi on Binance, and, like, when was the last time they actually, you know, put in some real professional quality trading tools into Binance. Yeah, in theory, for sure. I think that just the ROI for them is better or like more like noob friendly shit. For the record, for anyone joining right now, this is you start using this right away. If you go to the settings gear and then go to visibility, and it's risk profile beta. You just check this box and you can start using it. And for anyone who's kind of just popping in randomly on Twitch and hasn't heard of us, like we're a free to use trading terminal uh, called Teal Street. Teal Street. Follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter if somebody posts the Twitter link. And we support FTX, Bybit, Binance, Femex, OKEX, and BitMEX. Uh, right yep. now and definitely like more it's down the pipe to integrate with KuCoin and Gate. Gate. Gate IO. And we'll be and maybe we'll some be. Dex perps. There's another thing too. I'm. I don't know if we could. I don't know if we should hint any features. There's like some stuff we're all working on, and then Sam stuff, and maybe we should keep it as surprises. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I know everyone's like trading on leverage too. Like I'm going back, and I'm going to with Sam like implement all the leverage awareness and size and setting stuff soon we know that's like obviously missing and this was the first step also to calculating leverage in a way um right so that's another one of those things whoever was mentioning about the fees leverage is another thing where it's like you would think it's simple on the surface where it's just my position value divided by my margin value but the thing is with the exchanges is now they're a lot of them are doing multi-currency margin and then they wait yep. they wait your coins at different values so yep. your your B and B might not be worth its full value in B and B. It might be worth eighty five percent. So we have to make sure that's and like all correct. That. Uh, <clears throat> look at that forty five <laughs> cents in profit, yeah, dude. You're rich. Uh-huh. That would be cool, Peter, actually. Sam would like Show, that. um, go, if you don't mind, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but the quick know. orders, um, I don't know what offsets you have right now, Standard. but it would be cool to see, um, you know, the minimum size, and then you can chuck in some. You want to see it, like, half? Oh, you don't need to do that. Yeah, just offer bids and offer asks with the offsets. Probably, like, maxing the margin. I'll just smash these buttons and see what the risk ah. manager says. Don't do take bids or take asks. Those are filling your. I know. You're filling. I'm not afraid Don't to do fill. It. I'm not afraid to take. You're getting orders. slipped. I'm not slipping with this money. <laughs> Let's see. Now I'm six cents up. Damn it! I was forty-five cents up. Now I'm losing money. And I just threw away less. half your profit. That's it. I am just going to ball balls into this. I shouldn't have put my notifications down there. We're going all in. 
All in, we going 100x? Balance. No, well, the max FTX can offer. We're at 19. Oh, nice. I, so, I thought you were on Bybit for some reason. That's the magic of Teal Street. You just don't know. It's that yeah, well, unified. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's that well, good. <laughs> it's literally in the, the, the URL at the top, so I could have just looked. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Uh, so what do, what do we got? I am 19x long now. I have you got two questions about funding, sorry. Okay. And trailing take profit, stop loss. Yeah, so conditional orders are definitely in the very near future. So yeah, trailing stop losses, ladder orders, scaled orders. Like order execution tools are very high on our priority list. I mean, we're stretched thin on the developer side, so we have to be really careful about what we prioritize um funding you mean like just the current market pairs funding i think that should be pretty easy right frag um do you just want to see it that's what you I think or do you yeah i think they just want to see it the calculate funding fee profit and that's like um that's like one of those things ton where it's just like fees uh wait i got there's a couple questions i'm reading ahead it's the same thing like fees we're like calculating funding calculating fees is so like um i think funding would be easier than fees for the record actually just pull it directly from the exchange right yeah but like when it expires when it fills will you get it at what time like funding gets calculated at different times on different exchanges like ftx is hourly every eight hours except FTX. for ftx yeah yeah, some do it. I mean, it's all over, I thought. Um, so it's one of those things where it's not linear. Like, I'm not just, like, placing uh, like placing a one Bitcoin order on every exchange is the same. You just place a one Bitcoin order in a size that adds up to one Bitcoin. But, like, something like fees and funding, oh. it's very different on the exchanges. And fu fees also gets to be very, very, very different per user. So it just takes, like, a bit more time to develop and make sure it's accurate. So people want to see how much they've paid in funding, not just the current funding rate on that market pair. Okay. They want to That's see both, something, I guess. Yeah, that would, that would be something that would show up in, um, if we did something like Coin Market Man, and uh, basically, I mean, funding is like a trade, uh, is in a, like a way. Yeah. I think it a acts as if it's like a trade, because um, you're giving, you're trading, literally sending money to the other side of your trade, <laughs> you know, whoever right. on the other side. Um, so that would be calculatable. It's one of those things, again, it's like, we'd love to do all of it. It's just, right now, the stability was a priority, kind of eked out some new features, and now there's a lot of good stuff in the works. So be patient. The more you tell, here's a good thing, we're free. And free. if we want to grow, we need more users. So yep. if you want to tell, get us to grow and get us to make new features, bring us some more accounts, you know? True. Go on Twitter. Tell your friends. Stop giving tell your easy mom, your money. Tell your dad. Tell your grandma. Teach your grandma how to leverage trade. Yes. You know, visit her in the retirement center. She's bored. She misses she you. A, Go visit her. Bring your laptop. She has Sign a her up. Okay, she could withdraw. Teal Street and Bybit. You could do a wire transfer from the four hundred one k right into Bybit. Grandma's four hundred one k. Uh, there's a question from Martha. Math our luck. Oh, math. Yeah, Matha. Is this something uh, in the last <laughs> yesterday math? Like basically okay. starting yesterday? Math R. Math R. If it's, um, if it's something that basically starting yesterday, we know about this. Sam's actually working on this right now. like a new thing kind of that developed i have since the beta oh, interesting beta. oh wait did are Finance. you on the new on the new site are you on beta.teal street or trade.teal street oh yeah some eventually beta is going to go away and everything's going to be on trade.teal street.io which is the current version so if you're um 
on beta switch to that see if you still have the problem and if you do there's a report bugs channel in the yep. discord and we'll be happy to like look into that yeah on the okay so it's live happening okay. on live as well um are you trading uh, linear or inverse and i'm gonna just we'll we'll note it when you answer but i'll look for some more questions here yeah if you also if you don't want to if you want to just dm us on discord yeah Bybit i mean Bybit's it's better great. so yeah Oh, the BUSD futures? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, those were a little tricky to implement, right? They're just like Bi Binance really pushing something that nobody really wanted, I think. Oh, I got stopped. Oh. There we go. You're right. Look at that. And well, it's would you gone. look at that? And we're done. Game over. I love this for the one percent move traders. You know exactly what price is one percent away. All right. So, any more questions in general? Uh, if you if you guys are also this is also a very new feature which is super useful. I what did what did I say the FUD HUD? <laughs> this Twitter feed right here. It's nice to have the anxiety, as Zalanu said, the anxiety of the risk profile to also have the FUD HUD pop up and also scare you as you're trading. <laughs> and you should be afraid because trading's like war. You get taken out at any minute. at Russia no air traffic wow look at the ETH candle how like ridiculous is that oof it's so like honestly look at it I just love the flat top Straight to boop, like down. Boop. Burp, burp. Um, let's see. Everybody, everybody have it and it's open. You like it? Any other questions? I think we could. Uh, I don't know. Move on. Maybe do some marbles. I want to try to get music going. That's not in a very aggressive way. Blackbird loves it. And also, in, if you have any ideas or you, you know, this is missing something or you want another feature, like Teal Street has so become, like, become so built on the backs of people coming to us and suggesting things. So you can go, I mean, like, at Sam, me, or Lat in chat. Lat's probably the most responsive. And, or in Discord. And go to Discord and be like, hey, I would be cool if we had this because we do want to hear about stuff. So, uh, yeah. This is like a real traders terminal we're not an exchange trying to make money off of you we're trying to help you make money from the exchange right trying yep to not let you be like taken advantage of and shit be aware of all the tools that all the big boys have uh Cardi, uh, yeah, I believe we have a ticket for it. Yeah, price alerts. Oh, man, that would be great. Hill Street's are, like going to put someone in the hospital when we have how much I'm going to lose, FUD HUD, price alerts. Someone's going to have like a heart attack at their computer. I might. That might be me. Night tons, thanks for coming by, sir. Always good to have you in chat. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, adding like Forex and stocks, equities, CFDs, that would be awesome. But that's, that's like a, a whole nother level of compliance stuff. But um, I mean, it's probably, it's most likely possible. It's just probably like more than a year away, realistically. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, if we're, if we're ever in a position where we can hire a bunch of people, then yeah, we could probably move it up in the queue. I think I figured out the sound thing. Nope. Still coming through the wrong thing. Yeah, PL history. That's a. It's common. It's a big, like I was talking about with fees and stuff. That was a, that's a big infrastructure change. That's a massive, massive infrastructure change and improvement. Not really change, more like it needs to be really its whole thing to manage your trade history, fetch your trade history, gather it, calculate it. And this, all of this FIFO, first in, first out shit of here is a first step mathematically to correctly calculating your PL history and your trade history. And we, we have ideas too that are a little more interesting than what Coin Market Man offers. Uh, we're not going to talk about it yet, but trust us. I want it too. Like we all want this stuff. Yep. By 23.39. Oh. Book map. Oh, did it come through? Yeah. Was it loud? No, it was fine. Okay, fine. Um, what time is that? You want to do marbles? We can give away the rest of this balance. Yeah. Just give it away, give it away, give it away now, as they say. Oh, Are you going to do USD or 